It's good to be back, America. I am here just in time for the Tuesday show. The waivers, we are making those critical decisions. Do you need to stash a player? Do you need someone for a spot start? Our streaming quarterback, our streaming defenses, everything in today's show. Don't miss a second. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, no! Welcome in. Oh, oh, we got the band back together. Sort of. Tuesday, November 19th, the Fantasy Footballers, Andy, Mike... And it, Jason. It's basically a two-man show because I'm about 50%. Jason's about 50%. <laughs> Different reasons. The outside <laughs> of my body is here. <laughs> the shell that you have come to know as Jason Moore is still on the show. <laughs> Jason Moore is no more? The inside is hollow. I am an M M&M and M with no chocolate. So you're like the uh, the Easter chocolate bunnies. Oh, with the where, where it's you're like oh that's ex- a whole bunch of chocolate. Oh, except it's not. they serve a purpose. Mm. Oh my god, they can be delicious and a tasty <laughs> treat. While I have no reason this. to be here. <laughs> you do. You absolutely do have a reason to be here. It's waiver day. We have uh, a tremendous amount of listeners that are just. Uh, dying for your advice. I They're guess. I guess. Dying for your death. I guess I am serving a purpose here because, you know, look, you eat that chocolate bunny, it's not good for you, but it gives you something that you want. And you've come here to this show today to witness <laughs> oh, the no. death of a man. And and I want to provide that for you. Not I everybody. Want you to, I want you to enjoy. This isn't good for you. But I hope it tastes delicious. <laughs> it did My for tears, me. yeah. Oh no! <laughs> Why don't you fill people in? Yeah, not every <laughs> fill fill them in. Well, you hey can't oh. fill me in. No, no, no. Fill them. Fill a fill river. Them. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> a river of tears. Okay. Uh, lay of the land here, and this is uh, once again. I, Jason, I'd like to say this speaks to the just the uh, purpose of this show. We are knee deep into fantasy football just like our listeners everybody we give advice to we give it to ourselves and last night jason and i were facing off in a battle mono e mono league of record uh, monday night football duel i had lost robert wood so i had to sign andre Patton for the evening never seen a player run more routes for no reason than Andre Patton. That feels so bad as a professional. Eight, Eighty to ninety percent of the routes every single week, and he's he's a real he's a heck of a blocker. But he put up a zero. It was I had Patrick Mahomes. Jason had his good friend Philip Rivers, as well as Tyreek Hill. Yada yada yada. Tyreek Hill left the game. Yada yada yada. Mahomes had a terrible game. Rivers is driving down the field. Rivers needs to essentially drive down the field for Jason to win. And he does. And he does. And I won. And Jason was up by half a point until one more. One more interception. I believe that is seven interceptions in the last two games. I have had all of them. (laughs) Um, But it took each one to put me where I'm at right now. You're not in a good place because you are right on the, the playoff edge. I've had so many unfathomably heartbreaky losses this year with monster scores and losing. And here I am today. We just got to press on and move on and the- keep scrapping and fighting and winning and <laughs> get, getting the playoffs. You, you don't mean any of those words I right now. I mean them. I don't feel them. Okay. So that happened last night. Uh, we had uh, two things happen to our producers oh, that dude, I'll, I'll bring is, to attention. Yes, let's take this show up a notch. Uh, first, <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> first, <laughs> uh, Judge Giamatti himself is now engaged to be married. Wait, are we allowed to say this? <laughs> yes, I clear. We cleared this yesterday. All right, Did that Woo! Like a, yeah. Yeah. Give me some Woo! words or something, Andy. Uh, this is, is fantastic. Jared Goff, maybe. Yes. Introducing. So uh, I'm gonna the, make sure the golf graphic doesn't come up 
for that though, <laughs> on YouTube side. You're not getting married to Jared right, Goff. Just let no. it happen. Just it's let it okay. Happen. And so congratulations, Brooks. Now, I don't know what the opposite of getting married is, but it's pretty close to what producer Borland <laughs> endured last night. He is happily married yeah, already. At an anniversary. Anniversary dinner. Welcome to Arizona. Driving back home on a normal road. A very well populated yes. large We're normal civilized road. people out here in Arizona. Nah. We're we're mostly civilized. Yeah. And the streets are civilized. <laughs> yeah. The streets are paved and real with traffic lights and stores and So the opposite of getting engaged is in fact coming back from an anniversary dinner and hitting a herd of javelina with your car <laughs> as they cross the road. So he is not even here this morning. He is safe. Him and his wife are yes. okay. But his car has been destroyed. The javelina are not safe. And if you don't <laughs> no. know what a javelina is, it's a wild boar. Just because I realize needed. people outside of this state it, just, don't know that. Just think about Pumbaa. That's right. Like right it, that's I mean, it's close, it's enough. close enough. Yeah, and and now the artist formerly known as Pumbaa, yeah. is <laughs> unfortunately, scattered underneath oh, his vehicle. Come on. Unfortunately for producer Borland, he needed a spear. That was the <laughs> oh only, yeah, the only way. As we I know. think he was actually ended up safe, Jay. So we have oh. a tale of two producers today. Uh, they're dealing with their car. They're okay. Trending wow. in different directions. What a night! Yes. Yeah. What a night, <laughs> Philip. What a night. But thank you guys. Yeah, Appreciate that. absolutely. We've so moved happy. past you, Brooks. We're so, no, we're so excited for you. <laughs> so happy for you. Um, Instagram dot com slash fantasy footballers. If you want to check out the gram, lots of stuff going up there each and every day. Stories, posts, that sort of thing. Join the dot com. That's our fantasy football community. Come hang out. We just put up a Discord server that now has thousands of Foot Clan members chatting it up in there. Everything from Sending in Monday Punday uh, recommendations to start sit dynasty all that stuff and, and 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 let me throw this Twitter handle out there I believe it is at Brooks C Carmian yeah you can oh. go and congratulate him on Twitter our great producers huge news it's so much more important than that awful man throwing picks. All right. Thanks, Jason. Well, i got to correct it now. It's just Brooks Carmine. Oh, no, all right. No C in Don't even know the man's Twitter right. handle? Well, it is a C there. <laughs> I was saying the first letter of his oh, last name. That's Brooks nice. C. Carmine. I got you. Yeah, it's you like can... Mike W. Wright. Yes. It's just, I'm just putting those together. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Yep. Monday Night Football, we do have to talk about it. Tyree Kill exited with a hamstring injury. Damian Williams exited with a ribs in rib injury. LaShawn McCoy exited with a concussion possible concussion. it was Patrick Mahomes career low in yardage this field was trash the second you saw two plays into this game it was inevitable that you would see bad football Melvin Gordon went down on a play his knee created a divot the size of uh, Delaware you had a situation where you know Byron Pringle couldn't cut back to pick up a first down the play after play it was concerning to me. It was concerning. You have Patrick Mahomes, the NFL MVP, having a run around on this field, set a career high mm -hmm. in rushing yardage. And Phillip Rivers, 353 yards, seemed like he could do whatever he wanted between the 20s. And it, whatever the Chiefs wanted inside the 20s. But uh, what were your takeaways from this game? It, the Chiefs looked broken without Tyreek Hill. Sammy Watkins caught two passes for 26 yards. McCall Hardman, two for 11, or sorry, two for 13, and Demarcus Robinson didn't catch a pass. Travis I mean, Kelsey was featured. I think you I think you really, th this was a, a bizarre game being that it was in Mexico City, high elevation with a trash field. It seemed like there was a limitation, but um, yeah, obviously no Tyreek Hill there hurt them. It, it did not seem like there was any player that stepped up in his absence, whether it was, you know, any of those guys. McColl didn't. Uh, Demarcus Robinson didn't. Um, so, you know, I think they need Tyreek Hill back. Obviously, they're going to bye week now this week. So that is good news and bad news for Tyreek Hill owners in the sense that, you know, he'll probably be back as soon as the Chiefs are back. Yeah, Eckler. Big game for Eckler and giving you more confidence in his role. Yeah, and it, honestly, it should have been bigger. You had a couple times where... Uh, I mean, like, he just missed on a touchdown. 
uh, towards that that final drive where you were soaking up the garbage targets. Philip Rivers unwisely decided to chuck into double coverage a few times when he could have just taken some easy yards for Eckler. But yes, he, as long as the is as, as long as the matchup is neutral to not just that you think that the Chargers are going to wreck the the opposing defense well this and Eckler is very safe this was important to see because this was you know we haven't seen those dump offs and the utilization of him in that screen game since they made the offensive coordinator change so there was sure. some worry that maybe they went away from that on purpose and right off the bat I mean drive one it was highlighting Eckler's pass catching ability which is great uh, for confidence in him going forward yeah, a couple bad drops by Melvin Gordon. He started. Uh, oh, you know. oh, don't get me goodness started. gracious. You know, I realize this, Jason. You are Philip Rivers. Sure. Yeah, my face is no. A he's whiny lost, baby. No, he's <laughs> lost sixty-one games in his career by seven or fewer points. Yeah. Mm. So you two <laughs> share. So happy. Was there a thought to not playing him this week just to not suffer under his I, wrath for two weeks? I begged people to drop better quarterbacks there was you know it was between him and Kyle Allen I made the right choice and it did not matter all right we might as well move on news and notes from around the league presented by sleeper all right we found out yesterday Juju Smith-Schuster also injured his knee on the same play he is questionable for the upcoming week, the Steelers signed Deion Kane. Not a great sign for his availability, but you're also dealing with concussions for Deontay Johnson. We'll let you know what goes on there. No update on Robert Woods in the mysterious absence. Still handling the personal matter. He does expect Brandon Cooks to return for Week 12. Yesterday we'll I was see. asked on the show whether we are still interested in Brandon Cooks. Maybe it was on the live stream, but... Ravens matchup, first game back, seems a little scary. It's hard to start him in the first game back. The nice thing is because it is a concussion. It's not a first thing back from a hamstring where you worry, okay, he's going to go out there and immediately tweak it when he's running. So that gives you a little bit of confidence. If Woods is out and Cooks is active, you know, and you're the Tyree Kill owner on by and Cooks has been dropped, I, I, you know, he's, he's definitely should be a guy in the conversation because if you're talking about waiver pickups – most people out there are not going to be the caliber of upside, even though we've been disappointed with what Brandon Cooks did prior to the concussions. He st we still know his upside, and it's phenomenal. All right, James Conner status is up in the air for Week 12. It's a Bengals matchup, but oh. Oh. I'm going to admit something. Come on. I'm going to admit something right here, right now on the show. Uh -oh. I don't know whether James Conner will be hit on his shoulder, the same separated shoulder that he has been hit on twice. I don't know. So when you play him, you are building in the risk of we've seen the re-injury already. What do you do there? We don't know whether he will fall on that shoulder again, whether he will be hit on that shoulder again. But if he is, he will leave the game. I feel like we know he's going to get hit on the shoulder. How do you avoid getting your shoulders hit as a running back. You don't know that he's going to be hit on that shoulder in a way that will knock him out. If they knew that, they wouldn't play him. Well, sure. I'm, I'm, not, you know, I'm just saying. You know, he's going to take damage. It's just a matter of so whether he is, can hold up. Is he going to leave the game? I you, here's the deal <laughs> with James Conner. I think you move him down a lot and you play him over really bad options. But if you have a good pivot and if he's active, Brian Hill, Devonta Freeman doesn't play. Do you play Brian Hill? Or James Conner with the chance you lose Conner? I think I, I think I go Brian Hill, even though the disappointing, you know, obviously horrific Against game. Against Tampa Bay? Oh, it is Tampa Bay. Yeah, I'd play Conner. I'd I take the risk about the match with Conner. I guess all I'm trying to say is that it's a very risky situation. Yes. So if you're a team that cannot afford to get, you know, one or two points from Conner, he may not even be out there. That's the, the truth. So, And it makes Jalen Samuels an interesting, like, lottery ticket for your team because if Connor's unavailable or limited Sanders uh, Samuels could be a lot better and this is the Bengals we're talking about yeah the nice thing is if Connor is out there Jalen Samuels still has value you you can play him J J James Connor plays the entire game and if you're in a PPR half point PPR Jalen Samuels could still be a worthy play but his upside is always to become 
you know, a near bell cow in the absence of a Connor injury. All right, Devonta Freeman, Austin Hooper, Dan Quinn said that they are, quote, trending the right way. I don't think we expect these guys to be back this week, but it is a possibility. It's one of the reasons that you can't, you couldn't have dropped Hooper. You got to wait and see what happens. He was too good for too long to throw him out, but he could play. I doubt but, it, but, but yeah, I mean, it, it's that's such a tough situation because I I doubt that they play this week as well. I mean, the, that initial prognosis we were all given from the media was a month. So if he misses this week, and then you have next week, and like we've been talking about. The, Players coming off of these injuries, and are you actually going to play them? Yes, in their first game back. Now, so. I, yes, that. The, so if he's back this week, you play Austin Hooper. Okay. I, I know we've been talking about. You know, we've basically said unless they're a superstar, you need to give yourself that buffer and not throw them in. But Austin Hooper is a superstar at the position. There's nobody that you you know you're talking about. Okay, grab Hollister off of waivers. I like Hollister. But Hollister versus Hooper in a matchup against the second worst team against tight ends, yeah. you're going to roll Hooper there. The way I would look at it, he's not going to practice Wednesday. Hooper's not. And they said hopefully they can get he can get out there Thursday, Friday. If he doesn't get out there Thursday, Friday, he's not going to play. That's probably what's going to happen this week. Dorsett is in the concussion protocol as well. Hmm. Okay. That well, offense has got to figure some things out. Yes. T.Y. Hilton making great progress. It will be three weeks tomorrow from the injury. Uh, or from dealing with this calf injury, I believe. Ahead of the Week 12 matchup against the Texans, which is a Thursday game, so you do have the advantage of, you know, you're going to know ahead of time whether to pivot off of T.Y. Hilton. Are you playing him if he's active? I am, yes. It's been enough time that if if he actually comes back, especially on a Thursday, be, to me, a, a midweek game, and they say, yeah, you're ready to go, they're they're fully confident that he's – is actually ready to play, and the, and the matchup is so good against the Houston Texans that I would play him. Will Fuller is also a game-time decision. I would not play him. Regardless. Yeah. Correct. If he's out, do you look at Stills at all you on can. Thursday night? You, yeah, you could think about it. Yeah, you can. He's a flex option, but uh, you know that role this season has had a couple big blow-up performances, but the majority and the, the vast majority – of the games, that role of the stretch player across the field from Hopkins has not been valuable this year. You're 100% right, and then after what they did last week on offense, hard to have any confidence. Colts are pretty um, competitive defense there. So News and Notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Before we get into the waiver segment, I want to introduce you to the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. Earn 5% back at Walmart Online. Games for the kids, headphones for dad, a laptop for mom, doesn't matter. You get 5% back at Walmart online. You also earn 2% at Walmart in-store, restaurants and travel, and 1% everywhere else. When you want all that, you need the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. What's in your wallet? Terms and exclusions apply. Capital One in A. Put me in, coach. All right, before we start getting into the names... For week 12 waivers, Mike, Jason, I want to kind of get your thought process when you look at waivers at this point of the season, right? We've got the Packers, Giants, Seahawks, Titans coming back off the bye, the Cardinals, Chiefs, Chargers, Vikings going on to the bye. But how do you look at a waiver pickup now? What are you evaluating it by? And we'll talk about drop candidates as well. Well, I know we had this question on the Patreon live stream um, last night, which was, is it too early to start looking at playoffs? And it's definitely not. We we did our playoff primer uh, a week and a half ago. This is the time when you are looking at your matchups, looking at your opponent's schedules, whatever you need to do to either make the playoffs or if you're secure in the playoffs, to win in the playoffs. So I'm stacking multiple defenses. I'm stacking uh, quarterbacks if I need to play, if I'm streaming still and I need to play a week or two out. Uh, I'm I'm looking at matchups th right now. Like I, you know, when you're looking at your running backs, your wide receivers, I'm not looking for a guy that I think can really turn it on and be something special. You know, three or four weeks from now, I'm looking at who's got the best matchup this week, get a win, uh, and 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 move on. With the exception of you know, as a tiebreaker, Dallas Goddard is nice because he's okay, but then he also has that ability to be great in the future should a Zach Ertz injury happen. 
Anything to add to that, Mike? I mean, if you are a team with a secure playoff position, you have a luxury of, uh, I guess, the stash mindset still. Yeah, I'm just I'm holding on to my handcuffs and really nothing to add for what Jason said. All right, let's talk about wide receiver pickups. Who's standing out for you? Devontae Parker had a big game last week, 7 for 135 on 10 targets. Has Cleveland, Philadelphia, the Jets, Giants, and Cincinnati. This matches with what Mike and I think Jason as well have said. This could just be the dirtiest league winner you've ever did have. They, they pop up every single year, and he he's owned in about 60% of leagues, so he's – he may not be available, especially in a competitive league. But nice thing is he's owned in the in our listeners' leagues because we've been talking about him for weeks. He is – but he would be the number one pickup. Going seven for 135 against Buffalo, I mean, that's incredible. <laughs> that's really, really amazing what Devontae Parker has been able to do. And it's, it's just – what a funny year. What a funny year that Devontae Parker was – was drafted to be something special, a first-round pick, is just horrifically bad for multiple years. They essentially they rework his deal because they don't want to pay him his real fifth-year option money. They're on a they're tanking, and now this is the year that Devontae Parker actually shows up. But it's great to see, and yes, he is uh, like we we have him in our NFL League One. We've just been holding on to him, and he's gonna be. He's probably going to be flexing for us for the rest of the season. It's Yeah, it's wild. But you saw and see with Fitzpatrick and yeah. Parker as the main target what you hoped for when the year began. You hoped that maybe fl you know, flinging at Fitzpatrick would do the thing he's done on, in many rosters, and now he's, now he's doing it. Since week four, he has not finished below the wide receiver 36 on a single week. There are very few people. Has that Sammy have been... Watkins finished in the top thirty-six? In the doubtful. List? That's a great question. That is very oh, doubtful. Yes, once three weeks ago he was the wide receiver thirty. Oh, he has not finished inside the top thirty since week one when he was the number one wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. Uh, All right, so let's talk about some lower owned options. You're looking at matchups. You know, Russell Gage at three percent owned is a spot start against Tampa Bay. Atlanta playing better, and uh, you know four targets against Carolina wasn't impressive. But if you are almost had a touchdown, yeah. If you're running out of the out of the slot, if Hooper's out, I think Gage is interesting against Tampa. Tampa stops stops and slows down the run. They're going to do it again against the running backs that Atlanta's running out there. So I think you could do worse than a spot start you know Tampa Bay giving up the most wide receiver fantasy points per game yeah, yeah. Russell Gage is he's interesting to me but more so once we're confirmed that Austin Hooper is out I I expect him to but th that really takes things up a notch for me for my interest in Russell Gage if let's say Hooper plays I think I'm more interested in James Washington they get to take on the Bengals it is on the road but it's it's also the Bengals and that uh, we talked about that wide receiver core is really beat up. Is Juju going to play? Is Deontay going to play? And James Washington, he didn't really come through with his opportunity against Cleveland, only three for 49 on five targets. But we're talking a spot start here, and I think that you, that Washington is, is very interesting. Yeah, I completely agree. If if this was against a good defense, I mean, even with, yeah, I'd be e out. Even with Juju gone and Deontay Johnson gone, you go, okay, well, now we only have to worry about James Washington. Well, worry all you want. You can't do anything. You're the Bengals. And so I, I, I do think James Washington is a really good play if both those guys – are out and he's alone against the Bengals. He's going to have enough targets. You know, we always joke about dividing up Mason Rudolph's yards. It sucks. He it's doesn't have enough pie. to divide up to those three guys. Well, if you're dividing it by one, right. I'm okay with that. You get the whole pie. Ah, that's my favorite time <laughs> of pie is when I get the whole pie. Debo Samuel's more heavily owned, but he was eight for 134 last week. I think there's a decent shot. They have to sit Sanders down. I don't know why they wouldn't. That's kind of my opinion. Unless there's no risk of re-injury, he's just pain tolerance, he's going to recover regardless. I don't know why you wouldn't give Sanders the opportunity to get healthy at the record that they're at. But And even if he's out there, I mean, who's to say it doesn't happen again where he re-aggravates the injury or is painful and plays a limited you know maybe he's only out there 50 percent of snaps i think debo is probably next on this list i would agree 
Yeah, he's 54% owned by the numbers that we have, but he's heating up by the standards that we yes, have. Yes, he is. How's Green Bay? Yeah, and Green Bay, and they're tough to – like, what do you make of Green Bay's Middle defense? of the road. Yeah, middle right. of the road. I think we we were fooled a little bit in the very beginning. Yeah, They're not upper echelon, but they're a solid defense that, you know, you can you can beat them. You can beat them with innovative play calling, and that's what Kyle Shanahan's all about. Debo's been very involved, establishing trust. Darius Slayton, don't forget about him. Yeah, what, what's tough for Slayton but is – But he has a tough match. He has the matchup against Chicago – but those like, – Slayton is, I think, the, the one uh, the one stash that I'm willing to make at this week's waiver crop because the the fantasy playoffs for the Giants and Darius Slayton at Philly, Miami – Your eyes got big. At, at Philly, Miami, at Washington. I mean, those are three-plus matchups for a wide receiver who's coming off of a breakout campaign of 14 targets, 10 for 121 and 2. Are you dropping Tyler Boyd for any of these guys? Yes. yes. I would move on from Boyd. Are you dropping Juju? No. No, I wouldn't drop him yet. Sammy Watkins? Yes. yes. Robert Woods? No. No. Oh, no. Okay. All right. Those are some of the more requested drop candidates from the Foot Clan. Anybody else you want to mention at wide receiver that's at the top? Are you looking at Josh Gordon? Maybe you're a contending team. He has Philadelphia this week. It's gr It's should be a very good matchup against Philly, especially for his skill set down the field. But Josh Gordon or Randall Cobb this week? I would, I would probably go Josh Gordon there another week in the system. The difference being, like, Cobb is Cobb should be brought up because you want to talk NBA Jam rules. He's had two. He's heating up. He, I mean, you want to stay in this, except he's on the road in Foxborough against the best defense we've seen in a long time. The, the but Patriots, if they're focused on shutting down Amari Cooper... That's fair. I mean, this could be a Randall Cobb game. But the thing is, is while I do expect them to take out their number one options, and it might be a down game for Cooper and Zeke, I don't expect Dallas to do a whole lot to make... I, I, would, I would just be really fearful to play Cobb. Yeah, I would too. Although, Amari Cooper's situation is very scary for fantasy football owners, in my opinion. He was very limited in this game. He played uh, a, a limited amount of snaps. Gallup and Cobb had a better game. He's been dealing with this injury on and off. Mm -hmm. This is not a player that feel like he's been so good, mostly at home. He's been so good that, you know, you're kind of backed into starting him, but he could submarine a playoff run. He could submarine a playoff matchup if he's banged up and he leaves the field. So where how are you feeling about Amari Cooper? Uh, not <laughs> you've described it accurately. Not safe currently, so but I'm still gonna play him. Unfortunately, the matchup stinks. But back so the Josh Gordon Randall Cobb, Gordon was in on 37 percent of snaps for Seattle. That was only his first game right at, with the team. Do you expect that to be up? But, I but up substantially. I definitely expect it to be up substan substantially. Uh, he was he was there for a very short period of time, and when the game mattered the most is the percentage of the snaps that he was in on. Those big third down plays. Well, two for 27. So, I, I mean, don't go too out of control with no, what he did. but do you remember those yes, two they were, plays? They were, they were very high leverage plays. That's yes. what I'm talking about. They were must-win plays, and both of them third downs, important deep pickups, both went to Gordon. That's that's all I'm saying. Yeah, they, I don't think there's any question that his involvement's going to increase. They, they brought him in for a reason, and they don't have the depth chart. I mean, you, you might not even have Tyler Lockett this week. If you listen to Pete Carroll... That's a good point. You know, Ty, he said Tyler Lockett, "Hey, we we need to see him practice. He he's not practicing today, dealing with the leg contusion. We think he's back, but maybe he's not. So, the role should increase. I'd expect him on the field probably close to double what he did in week one. That doesn't mean he's going to be productive. It doesn't mean that DK Metcalf's not a better player. But I think you might he might be a luxury pickup for a, a contending team that doesn't need to start him this week just in case he's a, a heavily used player. Sure." All right, I want to talk about some running back situations here. Daryl Williams, running back for the Kansas City Chiefs, may be the last man standing here. Damian, injured, McCoy, concussion. It doesn't seem but, like they're willing to use McCoy in a very high-volume role regardless right. of the situation. Even when Williams left, Daryl Williams was the first man out on the field. Daryl Williams was getting a lot of between-the-tackle stuff. And Shady fumbled again, but they are on their bye week. Correct. So I would expect, you know, health and the normal 
regime to be intact in two weeks. But that so if you are a so you're not signing Darrell Williams then. No, I I am. If let we're talking about the teams who you're locked, you're ready for the playoffs. I would grab Darrell Williams if I have that spot, and I would just stick him on the bench because maybe Shady McCoy is back. He had the the possible concussion. We'll we'll see whatever that turns into. But two weeks, I expect McCoy back. But what if Damian is not back with that rib injury? If you saw it, I mean, he got almost folded in half, and he was in a tremendous amount of pain. We don't have the full report yet, but that certainly had the looks of a broken rib. Uh, and then at that point, Daryl Williams will be in a, a full-time share, and he's also the third down back on top of that. So I think that Daryl is a, is a good stash if you, for, for teams where if you're locked in. Sure. Um, I, I mean, I, I can see a situation where that would happen. For me, I would – so here's a name I would rather have. Uh, if you remember from yesteryear, the handcuff extraordinaire for Ezekiel Elliott. Oh, you going to the fair. <laughs> the Scarborough <laughs> Fair. Bo Scarborough. Uh, I want. I only want him more than Daryl if I need a guy to play this week. Well, yeah, because Daryl's on by. Well, so but I mean – Anyone. <laughs> I need a guy to – But here's the deal for Bo. Washington, great. I'm yes. playing him this week. He is an excellent spot starter. But then Chicago, Minnesota, Tampa Bay, Denver. I can't Ch imagine you're playing Bo in those matches. Chicago, I think you're fine with. Their rush defense has not been good. I would agree, Minnesota, uh, Tampa Bay, th those are, those you are, are very not, difficult. You are not fine with any Detroit running back. You are not remotely <laughs> fine. This is Bo Scarborough's first yeah. ever career game. This is the first time he's ever been active for a game. I just don't want to walk down the Ty Johnson, J.D. McKissick, Bo Scarborough, Paul Perkins. Uh, we got, what, Trey Carson was was the feature? Sure. He was the Bo Scarborough of two the weeks Lions ago. The Lions waved running back Paul Perkins. Well, I am aware of that. Huzzah! Yes, they, are wrote, they might wave Bo Scarborough this week. I don't know what's going to happen. It, I, I guess the reason that I bring his name up is because they have – tried to figure out what to do with the absence of carry on Johnson. Absolutely. And they have not had success left, right, or center until Bo Scarborough comes in, looks okay. They give him 15 carries. It gets a touchdown. And now this is the Washington Redskins. That's it. We, we, Peterson you know, over Peterson or Scarborough starting this week in the same matchup. That's, that's where I would go. Bo Scarborough. It, I'd if, go Scarborough too. If you need a spot start this week, I think he's okay. Now that that's not yeah, to I'm say not he's saying top don't of the sign list. Him. I just said I didn't feel comfortable with any Detroit players in the backfield. Top of the list, you know, really should be the Indianapolis Colt running back. The problem is who is that? And it's a very big problem. You have the Thursday night matchup, which I guess is a plus, but we don't like Naheem Hines is the only safe pickup from that backfield you'll because you know what his role is you know he will catch passes no nope. yeah and he'll get some of the carries but between Jonathan Williams and Jordan Wilkins it's insane to see Jonathan Williams back by the way and if you don't remember him he was the Buffalo heir to be he was the heir apparent behind Shady McCoy years ago loved him I thought he was so talented he was gonna be great and then he knuckleheaded his way out of the yeah. league. I would, I would pick up Jonathan Williams. I would as well. Jordan Wilkins missed last week injured. It's a Thursday game. There's it's very. He thinks he'll be back. It doesn't. Yeah. But you have to listen to what the coaching staff says about Jonathan Williams. They've been repeating themselves for a long time. And if you listen to the post game press conference, you listen to the head coach talk about him. They're in love with Jonathan Williams. The way he runs, the way he finishes runs. He had a monster week. This he is a did. great uh, rushing offense. Naeem Hines will not get between the tackle work. I don't want to. I know 100% what you're saying, Mike, about Hines. He's got a guaranteed third down role. I'd rather have Jonathan Williams than okay. Naeem Hines because I don't want. I, I want the between the tackle work. I want the hard running that we saw from Jonathan Williams last week. They're going to give him a shot. That's what I believe. That, and it's tough because you have. It, it is what do you believe where Jonathan Williams is was added like halfway through the season that he's before this past week. He had seen two carries for this team in Week Ten, and that's only because Wilkins was hurt. I mean, Wilkins has been their guy, so it's it, it, it's a really tough situation to navigate. Where Wilkins was the backup for for Marlon Mack for for a while now, did he really lose that job because he was hurt? And Williams had one pretty good game, which was an unbelievably plus matchup as you saw Marlon Mack was crushing that. that yeah. Wh whether, too. whether it's Jonathan Williams or Jordan Wilkins, you put a bid on both those guys in whichever direction 
you, you think is best based on what we're saying, but I would be more confident my pickup would be Naeem Hines. I don't want to bury the lead. He's at least a pass-catching guy. His role is secure. He did get more carries in that game when Marlon Mack went out, so he's not going to take over the Marlon Mack role at all, but I expect his role to grow, and because he's the pass-catching back, and he's I think you know the most talented of these three. He's a, he's a pretty good back. Uh, he would be the guy that I would put the the bid on, since you really have no clue. You could put the bid in on Jonathan Williams or Jordan Wilkins, and you're going to start them if you if you're saying I need them, and you put them in, and either guy could just disappear. I don't think Naeem Hines has that ability. Yeah, I guess we just disagree on that one. I uh, I definitely go the Jonathan Williams side. You guys would both go Hines. Gus Edwards had the big week last week. He's just in the handcuff category, but a juicy handcuff. That, that, yeah. that sounds weird. <laughs> All right, Darius Geis. Mike, yesterday on the show we said we thought it would be nice to sell high on Geis based on the fact that I don't they blame split you. carries. They were both not productive in the running game. One play for Darius Geis, but it is Detroit. Detroit can't really stop running back, so there is an opportunity here. And it, it, if you're trying to read the tea leaves at all, the game started – with Adrian Peterson, and then Darius Geis took over and was the running back. So it, He was just bad. They were both really bad on the ground. Sure, but if you're Washington and they're going to insist on continuing with the, the Dwayne Haskins experiment, then it would seem you would want to go with Darius Would Geis. you prioritize Darius Geis then over uh, any of the Indianapolis backs, Balazs, uh, Scarborough, any of those guys? Uh, yeah, I think I would. Okay. We're uh, we're all this we're is the all, time yeah, we're, the, we're really all over the map on the yeah, running backs here, and that's it's tough. At least there are a lot of options. I mean, you you know you might not like Bo Scarborough, you might love Darius Geis, you might be on the exact opposite. But between Bo Scarborough, Jalen Samuels, Naeem Hines, and Jonathan Wilkins, Jordan Wilkins, and uh, Geis, there are options here for people that need a play. It's just a matter of guessing the right one. Well, and it's matchups, right? Scarborough at Washington. Darius Geis, Detroit, Indianapolis. You get the Thursday night, you know, situation against Houston. And then Jalen Samuels, if he's out there, has Cincinnati and should have a role regardless of whether Connor's active. Are you uh, – let's go – let's talk to our deep league peeps. If James Connor is out – Our deeps? Deep – yeah, the deeps. Yeah. What's up, deeps? If Connor is out, are you interested at all in Trey Edmonds? It is such a good matchup. Week week nine, 12 for 73 against the Colts yeah. and when James Conner was out, and it was him and Samuels. Also the last yeah, two weeks. Yeah, you had weeks. Brooks James out there too, though, so I'm not very confident. The last what? two weeks, seven for 12. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, it's one of those things where, yeah, his name – I say no to the deeps. His, all right. His name should be brought up. He could have a decent game against a really winnable matchup if James Conner is out. Um, but he has not been great or good. Fantasy football owners, don't forget about Wayne Gallman, please. Please don't forget about Wayne Gallman. We don't know the health of Saquon Barkley heading into the week, throughout the rest of the year, obviously dealing with injury. The team could choose to shut him down at some point. It's not what we're projecting, but it is a possibility. And if Wayne Gallman is the man lost among all these other week one starts and you need to add somebody to your bench – you could end up with a starting running back for four or five weeks against, you know, which could matter. Yep. Other names that you want to bring up at the running back position? Uh, Not for me. No. Don't forget your handcuffs, Madison, Pollard, Gus Edwards, and company. Tight end pickups. Mike, I want you to weigh in here. I am all about Ryan Griffin at the tight end position. He's had uh, several very good weeks over the last five playing 80 to 95% of snaps, no more Herndon, earning the trust of Darnold. He's 0% owned by the numbers that we have. Has <laughs> Oakland, Cincinnati, Miami the next three weeks. Okay. Five for 109 and one on five targets last week. He's, he's my favorite pickup at the position. Interesting. So I like him. It's I'm trying to order the uh, the, the the guys I like. Because there's – like the running back position, the, the tight ends you can pick up, for me, the highlights will be Ryan Griffin, Noah Fant, Jacob Hollister, and Dallas Goddard. Like I think all four of those guys are in play. You've seen Noah Fant. You've seen his his uh, snaps and the targets. Everything has elevated 
drastically since Emmanuel Sanders is gone. I mean, 11 targets this past week, four for 60. We wish you could have gotten a little bit more. He's a great pickup. But he's he's very interesting. It's tough. It's tough to go with Ryan Griffin as the number one out of these options. He, You are right. Three of the past four weeks have been very solid. He's been the number one tight end two of the last four weeks. He's wow. also finished in the top 15 four out of the last six weeks. Yeah. It, I mean, Sam Darnold but is But Fant, the is targets that you brought up about Fant, that is a very attractive amount of targets. But yeah. oh, I just love the matchups. Yeah, you Oakland want to play Fant the against Buffalo, the Chargers in Houston, or do you want to play Oakland, Cincinnati, Miami? Jason, you are all about Abercrombie. Yeah, I, I, I yeah, I, Hollister is probably at the top of the list for me, just because it's Russell Wilson. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing: I, I don't love the Philadelphia matchup as much as Ryan Griffin's upcoming schedule. So I think it's very close between those two. But Jacob Hollister. Showed out the last two games. And, and the thing is, is we've seen Russell Wilson when he's got a capable tight end. Will Disley uh, used him and used him around the goal line. And they would the scheme to open him up for uh, touchdowns. And we brought up Tyler Lockett might be missing. And I think Abercrombie could be a good pickup the rest of the way. And so um, he's on the list. The one name that I, you know, if, if Being I'm picking Jacob Hollister, Jacob Hollister, a.k.a. Yes. Abercrombie. That's what he wears. No Hollister for him. Um, between Ryan Griffin and Jacob Hollister. If your name was Hollister, would you wear Hollister? I think you yeah, would. Yeah, I would totally you, would. You would, right? I 100% would. Well, because yeah. you're wearing yourself. Right. No, I just mean Jason would be the kind of... Like, yeah, I would Some be people the, would be like, I divert that. Like, my name's Hollister. I would never be caught dead in a Hollister shirt. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Abercrombie. <laughs> so, yeah, like, thank goodness I wasn't named Old Navy. <laughs> Uh, because I'd just be rocking those logo shirts. Mm -hmm. They're like, look at me. It's this, weird, is, this is me. It's a strange um, name. Just bathing in their cologne. All Ooh, right. Oh, yeah. Uh, so here's the name I, I do want to bring up. <laughs> and I want to bring it up because I feel a little skewed. Um, I feel a little hot and bothered. And I want you to talk me down off of this. Is this are we talking about Cleveland? We are talking about Cleveland. We are talking about David and Joku. This now guy. He, <laughs> He's not back yet. This guy. I know this is more of a hold because I can't imagine you playing him, but <laughs> Miami, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Arizona, these are amazing matchups. He has the best rest of season schedule for tight ends. And by he, I just mean Cleveland because he isn't out there yet. But as far as a talent, you're bringing up names, Ryan Griffin, Jacob Hollister, maybe Darren Fells, Ross Dwelly. None of these guys are anywhere near the talent as a human being that – David and Joku is, but is it is it is it bad advice to say pick up this guy who's been injured isn't back yet for the struggling Browns? Because I feel like, well, I mean, I, I think it might be a little bit of an indictment on players like Dallas Goddard, and Noah Fant, to say Njoku is some other world athlete, ah, and they're ah, not. I left those names out. You on did. Purpose. You did. And those would be two names that I'd rather have than David and Joku. Dallas Goddard will play a ton of snaps, limited wide receiver options. Carson Wentz can't get it together, and no fan with the targets. So, do I think it's idiotic? No, I don't think it's idiotic. But you have talk a, to the deeps. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about what has to happen. You need Njoku to get back, get integrated on all the snaps, and then get Baker Mayfield going. So, is it possible? Sure, probable. I would be on the outside of that one, Mike. Where do you weigh in? I am on the outside of the probability as well. But I, it's it's not an idiotic move at at all to stash him. It's such a strong word when I even when I said it, I was like, "It's you're not an idiot." It, but it was your word. I know. I was mine. just saying yeah, your just, word. Thank you, guys. Not an idiot. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I think that Jason's also secretly hoping for peanut butter dwelly time once again. Oh goodness! Oh peanut butter dwelly time. All right. Uh, we, you expect Kittle back, right? I don't know. All right. Like this know. season, yes. Yeah, but this, this season. week. Maybe well, not. But let's keep it in mind. Peanut butter dwelly time was brought on by the Arizona Cardinals defense and, yes. and that defense alone. All right. Other yeah. drop candidates. I'm just going to ask them real quick. Would you drop? People have to make decisions for all these names. David Johnson. No. Willing. Willing. Uh, Brian Hill. Uh, willing to drop him, yeah. Yeah. He's a no for me. Uh, Sony Michelle. No. Okay. No. Let's talk quarterbacks. Full stream ahead. 
Streaming quarterback options. Update. Update. David and Joku, Olivier Vernon, among those not out at Brown's practice today. So, <laughs> no, I, it's just the thing is, is if I, I I wanted to look that up because if he was, if he's practicing and yeah, yeah, no, it, it, being in full, then I, sure. I am interested. If he's not out. Breaking news. Uh oh, that face says. Get your that, voice ready, Jay. Oh no, the Dolphins have waived Mark Walton. Oh, oh no. Hey, <laughs> they've been what? made aware of a police matter. <laughs> no, oh, come on, no. Mark. Come Earlier on, this morning, dude. regarding Walton, now four blemishes on the resume, according to Roto World. This is Adam wow. Beasley on Twitter. Did we not bring up Balage? Uh, no, because we should not. No, I was, you. I mean, we did. I brought. I brought him up. You. I'm. No. I didn't overview him. We've been talking about him for weeks. J- Kalen Blodge is. He's going to get you ten points as a starting running back. Maybe. Well, he has every single time. Uh, no. Every time he's been the starter it, since uh, the Walton suspension. I mean, he got a touchdown. All the weeks this we've passion. said, yeah. But what? Uh, hold on. Really? <laughs> yes. Now, he's when been, you say even last all week, of he the was, weeks, even last week he was horrible. I'm not saying he's good, guys. He's t- he was seven for nineteen is not ten points. Wait, last week? Three weeks? When his his three weeks ago? No, there's only been two weeks. Oh, it's only been twenty eighth and twenty fifth. So okay. do what you. He look, he sucks. Nine he sucks for football. nine with a touchdown. I guess he caught a bunch. He caught, he caught five passes for eight yards. Yes, five <laughs> passes for eight <laughs> yards. Nine <laughs> carries for nine <laughs> yards. This. Dude sucks. He has, right now, he's on pace for 102 rushing attempts at 195 yards, 1.9 yards a carry. I thought we brought him up perfectly, which is in passing. All right. Okay? Yep. No, thank you. No, no. All right, streaming quarterback options for week 12. I'm going to go once again. Oh. I'm going to go back. Send in the car. Send in the car. I will not stop. Endorsing the six and four Raider quarterback Derek Carr, twenty five for twenty nine last week, plays New York. The Jets' offense is actually figuring some things out. I think there's a lot of opportunity in this game for Carr, Tyrell Williams, the Walrus and company. Solid, safe streamer Derek Carr. I am going uh, with a guy who I think is. Looked a little bit better lately. Has Look, not he's been. He's looked a lot better. He's looked a lot better. He has not looked great because his last four matchups have been just uh, assassins row here: New England, Denver, Buffalo, and Pittsburgh. That is as hard as it gets for a quarterback matchup stretch. And I'm talking about the Injokulis Baker <laughs> Mayfield. I think he's a good streaming option this week. Uh, you know, he's he's got Miami on the docket. Their offense has been getting better. Miami is the second lowest in pressure and sack rate in the league. So that's a clean pocket for Baker. We've seen him be able to succeed when he has time to throw, but that offensive line has been such a problem this year. And the offensive line will have an easier time against the Dolphins. Um, you know, you, you just you look at him under pressure and not under pressure. And under I think this pressure. is a good matchup. He's got two touchdowns in each of the last two weeks. Baker's a guy I think you can play. I agree with you. And I am going to stream Donald Schwarzenegger. It is oh me. I am God. back. Oh, dear. Shouldn't, you shouldn't be back. But it's too late. I am put oh, me in. Gosh. Oh, gosh. I'm going with Sam Donald. Please don't turn off your, what? <laughs> don't turn off your podcast. Never. All right. He gets to play Oakland. Oakland allowing the six most, most passing yards. <laughs> look, and they're allowing deep plays. And Donald finally was connecting on some deep plays. And look. Jamison Crowder. I mean, he he is what we had hoped Robbie Anderson would become, which is a very reliable weapon in the passing game for Sam Darnold. And he, I, I think that the the football has been or the, the the football played by the Jets and Sam Darnold has been a lot better. Four touchdowns against Washington, a beatable matchup. You can stream him. How is Baker Mayfield fifty four percent owned? I don't know, man. Are you saying on the high side or the low side? I'm the high saying side. I can't believe that over half of because leagues that, already no- have Baker when he has sucked all season and been unusable the last month and a half. Because there's a 10 to 20% variable there of the fact he was a normally drafted quarterback. So if you had an auto-drafted league, he's on rosters. I think that's why. Okay. That's the direction I lean. By the way, Mike, did you listen to the show yesterday when you were down and out? No, and- I was deceased. Okay, did you mi- so you missed Jason use his mute button mid-word. Mm, that's correct. 
It sounded <laughs> like there was some sort of... Uh, I cut myself off. I was not sure I was done talking. That's correct. But I am me. So it was interesting. How yeah. did you do that? Well, I needed a cough. And I... So I went to use the cough button, but I cut myself off. Yeah, it, was very, it was very jarring. Uh, Producer Borland uh, thought that we had lost power in some capacity. So it was very special. That's very funny. Very special moment. Defense versus offense. Presented by Head and & Shoulders and Walmart. All right, defense versus offense. Defensive streaming options this week. I uh, I especially like Mike's pick this week. Cause oh, why yes. Wouldn't, why wouldn't you? Oh, yes. I'll just kick it off here. I'm going with Detroit taking on Washington. And, yes, we have – some stats. I mean, we could rattle these off. You know, like Washington averaging about 170 fast or passing yards per game fewest. They're averaging 53 plays per game fewest. But here's the deal: Dwayne Haskins is really, really bad. Uh, we had hoped, we had some high hopes here for Dwayne Haskins that he had the bye week. This was his second start that he could actually come through and do something. But if the Dwayne Haskins experiment continues then Detroit is fully in play. Uh, he is bad. Well, he's he's going to take sacks. He's going to turn the ball over. Yep. He's going to do it through fumbles. He's going to do it through interceptions. And uh, it's difficult to watch. <laughs> that's, yes. the, that's the truth. Jason. Look, I'm going with a team that is out there. They are widely available because they've been a trash, 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 awful defense. This whole year. This is a team you can't imagine playing. But something happened in the bye week for the Atlanta Falcons, and I believe it's real. The, Andy, you said you confirmed this morning. Yeah, Dan Quinn gave up play calling duties after the bye. Raheem Morris and mostly linebacker coach Jeff Ulbrich took over, and wow. Yeah, and so. Should that get Quinn fired? At, <laughs> I mean, it's, you, do, do you fire the guy for making the correct decision? Yeah, that's to it's a the desperate offense? call, though. He should have made that decision before, I don't know, before the bye week. Yeah, well, here's the deal. The decision has been made. The Atlanta Falcons the last two weeks have been excellent. And yeah. not, uh, I mean, you, you saw what they did to Kyle Allen this last week, but the week before was, uh, you know, against the New Orleans Saints, against Drew Brees, and they looked pretty good. Now they get a divisional matchup against Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay. Look, if Tampa Bay has 400 yards of offense, on the Atlanta Falcons, the Atlanta Falcons can still have a monstrous fantasy day because they can have two pick sixes. Jameis Winston has 13 interceptions over his last five games. That's just impressive work. And I think the Atlanta Falcons are a streamable play uh, in this matchup this week. Mike is trying to tell me not to bring Don't up. do it, man. I, could <laughs> I did it again. What is what wrong are you with doing? my brain? What are you doing? Why are know. you pushing the button? <clears throat> All right. What you, are you doing? I, you know my, how coughing my, works. It happens after your sentence. My hand is not part of. You got my, a quick draw. I got a quick draw, dude. If if we were if we were fastest in a duel, cough button in the West. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if we were in a duel, you'd be dead. Um, here's the deal. Big <laughs> because it would be like draw on three, I, one, two, boom. <laughs> yeah, you're done right. Um, I I saw this in the dock, Andy, and I I made eyes with you. And I thought that was a joke placeholder. And I was excited to see who you're going with. But let's tell the Foot Clan. Let's see what happens here. Cincinnati is at home against Mason Rudolph, and that's it. So you're saying the Pittsburgh Steelers D got it. No, I'm saying the Cincinnati Bengals defense at home against Pittsburgh. Does Pittsburgh have Juju, Deontay Johnson? Does he have James Conner? It's going on the road. This is not a good situation. Mm, and, all right. And you know for a fact that there will be turnovers, and sometimes that's really what takes the cake. Mike, is the Detroit defense a good defense? No. I think they might be worse statistically than the Bengals this year in a lot of various metrics, but they're not a good defense. You're playing Mason Rudolph. That has meant very, but very good things. But Mason Rudolph is better than Dwayne Haskins. The last time that I mocked someone on this segment this for is, their pick yeah. – I couldn't handle me, Mike picking the Kansas City Chiefs yes. as a defense, and they were awesome that week. We have a StreamFinder tool. Yes, we, we have do. it for the Foot Clan at jointhefoot.com. 
Let me read you the fantasy finishes of teams that played Pittsburgh over the last three weeks. The Colts were the seventh best defense. The Rams were the third best defense. Last week, the Cleveland Browns were the third best defense. So the Mason Rudolph era equals top 10 defensive performances. Take away Juju. Take away Deontay Johnson. Take away James Conner. And then play them on the road. Mason Rudolph on the road. How's that look? I, I mean, I totally get that argument. That's and all you, I got for you. That's you all could, I can do. That's all I can do. You it, could very I, well be sense, right. Man. It's a divisional game. They need a win. You know what we did here today? We gave three defenses that are widely available. And you can stream this. Horrible week. defenses historically on the year. Yeah, on the year. But, I mean, this is. This Why is defense versus offense? Mm-hmm. That's right. This segment brought to you by Head and Shoulders and Walmart. Head and Shoulders offense for great hair. Defense Ooh, against flakes. Against the flakes. Visit Head and Shoulders Walmart Sweeps.com for your chance to win tickets to Super Bowl 54. That'll do it for us. Pristine Auction, thanks for sponsoring the oh. show. Thanks for being our studio sponsor. Oh, yes. Marlon Mack signed jersey. Come on, Brooks. Oh, why, are you, why are you taking a shot at Jason over here? $54.19. You're my co-owner. That's... We Mi- lost Marlon Mack. He did it because it was really close to. Oh, we lost that stupid. <laughs> oh, we lost that game. I can't believe. Did we you lost. forget? Did Did you make it through the show I, and you like, kind of forgot? I started to forget my sadness by, the you know through the show and now I remember all of it. Let's close the show out with some candid thoughts on Philip Rivers. Okay, he's washed. He's done. He's the <laughs> best person you can play against, and if I could trade him to my opponent, I would do it every week. All All right. right. (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.